right, fans of Middle Earth role playing. Roman Daisley, welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at two unique regions in this campaign module called Lorien and the Halls of the Elven Smiths. This book is 3200 in the campaign series, and this is a first edition, 1986. Can't remember exactly where I got it from. Probably it was Endless Adventure, and I can't remember what I paid for it, but it was Agnes McBride does the cover art. And I thought it was kind of cool. You got Galadriel in her mirror, and you can see the lights of Keras Galadrim. So I thought it was a pretty cool layout. So obviously you get to adventure with Galadriel and Celeborn. You also get to Celebrimbor and Atar, and you get to explore Keras Galadon, the High Tree City, Saren Amroth, the abandoned capital, and Austin Adel, Fortress of the Elder, and the Holes of the Elven Smith. So you're looking at two regions, basically. You are looking at, so you're looking at Lorien, and you're looking at Aragean. Now there's 72 pages, 8 full color maps, 12 major layouts in Elven history and background, and 3 rings of power. So that's your introduction. Personally, I this was a pretty cool module. I was really excited to get this, as it deals with something that's second age, as, a, as opposed to third age. And Lorien is a timeless place. So let's go through. I'm not going to go through the, the first part, because it's all the same, the guidelines and the locks and traps stuff and adapting this campaign to your module. So the introduction and the timeline events, this book is divided into two parts. You get the first part of Aragean, which is all second age, and then you get the third age, which is all Lorien, of the Kingdom of Holland and Aragean. It was founded first by Cal Galadriel and Celeborn from the capital of the city of Austin Adel. Celebrimbor the Smith, who was the grandson of Finor, establishes the great forging complex and guild of forgers. Gwaith e Merdan, people of the Jewelsmiths, and they establish trade with the dwarves of Khazadum. Remember in the movies and the books, the fellowship goes to the west gate of Moria and Celebrimbor and Narvi, where the Narvi forged the door, Celebrimbor carved the initials in a row. So that's the start of, of the Aragean period, and it lasts until the forging of the rings of power and the forging of the one ring, and Sauron declares war against the elves which results in the destruction of Aragean as a realm and the sacking of Austin and Dell. So not much happens after that After that period in Aragean. It's just a ruin. The Third Age deals more with Lorien. Not much happens in Lorien. Throughout the entire Third Age, there's not a heck of a lot that happens there other than that they, the Balrog comes forth from Moria. Many elves flee with Lorien. Amroth and Nimrodel are lost. Galadriel and Celeborn fearing that Lorien will be abandoned without a ruler return. They take no titles, however... Galadriel exerts her power and the land is made secure. So she uses her ring to secure Lorien, or it might have been lost. It's King Amroth departed, had gone off after Nimrodel. So that's the major event for Lorien in the mid-third age. And it's just a place where you can relax and chill while you're out in the wild, after being out in the wild for a while. The White Council probably meets there a few times. It's not until the end of the, th end of the third age in the War of the Ring that Dol Goldor launches three attacks against Lorien, Lothlorien. And then, of course, Galadriel... After the War of the Ring and the destruction of the One Ring, Galadriel goes across the ocean. Celeborn, who claimed uh, Southern Mirkwood as his own, as East Lorien, he gets weary, departs from him, religious, and that's pretty much the end of uh, Lothlorien. Arwen dies there. The lands, it talks about the geography of the land, climate, flora of Lorien first. And it gives you a little black and white map of the region. See, you see that between these two elven realms was, was Moria. And it gives you the animals that are there. Fauna, flora, and then it goes into the region of Aragean. Now this is at a time of the ruin, so you have like forest trolls, hill trolls, stone trolls. I don't think there are many trolls that far south. The dwarves would not have put up with them, and neither would elves. You get your climate and calendars, nothing big. Then you get the elves. The, the elves of Aragean are mostly Noldorn, with a lot of Sindarin and Sylvan elves mixed in. It's a mixed population of the Eldar and the Teleri. While Lorien is mostly a Teleran realm of elves who never went to the saw the light of the two trees. And they have a Sindarin aristocracy and Galadriel's at the top of that as the only one of the few Noldoran who are there probably later on in their history. And of course it talks about their language, religion, physical characteristics, the differences. For some reason it mentions the Vanyar who never come to Middle Earth. You have the Noldor, the Teleri, the Sindar, and Nandor, and then the Avari Moraquindi, who are the Dark Elves. So it does give you the elven racial trees. As a backstory, I like how they go in the backstory of all this and use Tolkien's works. You have the technology of the Jewelsmiths, which is pretty cool. 
and they're the smiths, their tools and techniques. Smelting, foraging, workshops, high jewel smiths, silver smiths, gold smiths, and it talks about their favorite. It's kind of like a Moria before you go on the... And then finally, it also mentions the elves of Lorien and the elves of Austin and Dell. So it breaks things up between the second age and the third age. Aragean is more of a second age. Lorien is a third age. So we'll go over the maps for a minute. So the maps that come out of this, you get the map of Aragean. It's already a ruin, so this is a mid-third age map. It does have Austin and Dell as a ruin. And you can see how it, they used to have fields. And for some reason, they give you a huge map of the Peter Fenlon Middle Earth map. I don't know why. It's kind of a wasted space. A layout of the uh, House of the Murdane. So there's the Smiths. The layout of their halls. Which is kind of cool. And it gives you a bigger regional map of Aragean with the center part of Arnor. I don't know why they added this map. It makes no sense to me. But the coolest thing was the city of Austin Adele. Which kind of looked like a ship in a way. So that was a, I thought that was a pretty cool map. And on the other side, they also give you a map of Lothlorien. For some reason, it's cut off on the southern end. So you have Saren Amroth and you have Keras Galadon. And then the final map is the uh, Keras Galadon and Saren Amroth. So you can see the cross section of Saren Amroth with the Malorn trees and the white trees on a hill. And the cross section of Keras Galadon. The gate bridge, the foss or dry ditch, dry moat. And it has a little wall too. It has a green wall going around it. Not exactly a major fortification. The Romans were great at taking these kind of places. And Sauron probably would have taken it had he been able to go there himself with his forces that he had in Mordor. So that's we got powers and politics and power, the, El the fortress of the Eldar. So I love how this book goes in the Austin Adele, the second age from 1350, which is when the Lord of the Gifts has arrived in the, around the year 1200. Sauron has hidden himself and become an Atar, and he manages to infiltrate the society of the uh, Noldor using their lust for learning. And it talks about him, his stats. Of course, right into the stats of these things. And then it goes into the jewel smiths, a list of master smiths, lord smiths, metal hall smiths. So there's a, a hierarchy. When you start, you start at the bottom, you work your way up. Then we got Celebrimbor. I like that picture of Celebrimbor by Dan Forth, defending the halls of the elven smith. And it talks about Celebrimbor, who was born, started his real life in Nargothrond, Nargorthrond, and was a grandson of Fenor. And it gives us stats. It gives him in Role Master and Merp, so that's kind of, you use both. His principal weapons. And it talks about other mythical masters jewel of the Jewelsmiths. Fendone, Agnor, Finculin, Or, and Fenari. So these are fictional characters, like Merp characters, not actual Tolkien characters. As he never really mentioned any other Smiths, but they would have been something like that. And to be politically correct, they have a few women as well. And it talks about notes of the Rings of Power. And of the 20 Rings of Power, only the three were forged by Celebrimbor alone and untouched by the Hand of Sauron, which is, may, which is good. And it briefly mentions, touches upon Austin and Adele in the mid-third age, which no longer exists. It had been sacked by Sauron in the second age and was never rebuilt. I thought they should have rebuilt it, but what can you do? Then we finally get to Lorien itself. From 2nd Age 1375 to 1780, Lorien was uh, governed by Gladriel, who, was, who left after facing, I wouldn't say a revolt, but it was definitely tension between her and Celebrimbor over Sauron, Sauron's arrival. So she left. She went through Moria, or Khazad-dum, it was called at the time. She was given passage, her and her entourage, and she... Um, she ruled Lorien from that time on. And then in 1780 to 1981 of the Second Age, there was the Sindarin kings. Lord Amdur was made king and, and led part of an army alongside Gilgalad as part of the Last Alliance. He was slain in that battle, and his son Amroth assumed the kingship. So now we have Amroth. He rules Lorien, but falls in love with Nimrodel of legend. But when the Belrog comes, she leaves at they leave at 981. And that brought Galadriel back for the rest of the Third Age. Now that we have the backstory of them, and it talks about things that happen in Lorien, like you got the glades or guilds, the Weaver's Guild, Boatman's Guild, Guardian's Glade, Smith's Glade, Baker's Glade. So all sorts of different glades that do the day-to-day -day stuff in Lorien. We get to another pr Galadriel, who's used an NPC, Celeborn, talking about Galadriel's Ring of Power, which is Nenya of Water, one of the three Elven Rings and its characteristics. Then we get Sites of Interest, so the Fortresses of the Elder. The Fortress of the Elder, 
Austin Adele. He gives the layout, then lands around Austin Adel, talks about Celeborn and Galadriel's house, then Celebrimbor's house. He's got the island house, okay. Celebrimbor's island house. So he has his little island island house. He's got this little island house out here. He's got prime real estate. And you can see just outside the city, they have the halls of the myth, the Myrdaethron, the house of Agnor. So he has various houses in this region. Next, we go to Anatar's house, or Sauron's house. And it's kind of... Uh, Looks more like a fortress or a tomb in its shape and design. While the elves go for perfection and beauty and aesthetics, Sauron's more severe, which should have been one of the warning signs right there. But what can you do? You got bell towers, the high citadel, parks. Talks about Ortani, Oritan which are to lift up elevators. Okay, that's kind of far-fetched. Some of the stuff they come up with was far-fetched in these books. And it gives like just points in the city of inns, glass blowers, fountain baths, all sorts of stuff. It does have a tavern called the Bottomless Mug. That's kind of cool because, hey, elves like their wine and they like their, they probably drink. Peter Jackson even put a drinking game between Legolas and Gimli. So that doesn't sound, sounds like the same. Celeborn and Galadriel's villa outside the city. Doesn't have it on the map here, but they would have had their little country estate as well. Now, Celeborn, he wouldn't go through Moria, through Casa Doom, when Galadriel did, so he stayed behind. So their marriage was a little on the rocks at the time. Or Galadriel told him to stay here and watch things. And it gives details of this stuff. So I thought this was really cool that they went, I, Iron Crown went this direction. It gives you another estate, a typical estate of some guy named Carnell, his house and winery. So a typical, another typical estate, and then the halls of the Merdan. And that's kind of what it would look like from a distance. Tolkien never really described what it looked like. The Halls of the Merdain. He just said this is where they they made the rings. They were great smiths. And you get an in, and ice went and filled the gaps and gave an in-depth look at how this would have been designed. I thought it was pretty cool. So as far as adventuring goes in Austin Adele, during the Elven period, it's non-existent. Now you could do this during the, during the war between Sauron and the Elves. Sacking the city, hey, get a bunch of... Sauron's, you could be one of Sauron's mannish soldiers and go looking for stuff. Or the orcs. So you could help sack the city. And then after the sacking of the city, you get a brave band of adventurers to go poking through the ruins. The fact that no one else set up a city here or anything speaks that everyone was afraid of the elves. So in the third age, you could send a party here to go poke through the ruins and find stuff. If it's still there. But this city would have been sacked pretty thoroughly by Sauron's forces. And it would have also been sacked throughout the ages. Looters would have been poking through over the next couple of thousand years. Finally, he gets into Saren Amroth, Karis Galadron. But doesn't really talk much about what you can find in there. And you have your adventure guidelines. Selecting so an adventure, choosing a time period, which is, of course, obviously a major thing. For adventures, I mentioned, it, it suggests a second age adventure of an intrigue among the Murdane. Stealing secrets from Alundal. Murder in Austin and Dell. So this had all been during the time when uh, Sauron was there. And he was creating chaos and strife. Well, that sounds, sounds kind of interesting. The third age of adventures there would be obviously looting the halls of the Murdane, if you could find them. And the ruins of uh, the villa of Galadriel and Celeborn. First of all, the elves would have went back after the war with Sauron. Once everything had cooled down, they would have went back and found whatever they could. They would have also combed the ruins, took what they could of value, and, and abandoned it. So there wouldn't be much left, I don't think. In Lorien, a herb for the prince, message to Galadriel, which makes more sense, to steal a Malorn seed. Yeah, you're right. Some mannish guy is going to wander into Lorien and steal a Malorn seed. So there's not really much adventure that you can do in Lorien. A message to Galadriel is about the most realistic one, or finding would be the most realistic adventure you can do. Me and my friends, we just used Lorien as a stopover point if we, if we were lucky to get in, access in. But really, you can't really do much. It's just a place to chill until you go somewhere else, which makes this book kind of lo rate lower on my, on my list. But I do like the whole, the Aegean part. The Master Military Table, this one I really like because it does give the Aegean Military Tables of Austin Adele, the guards at the Smith Halls, and then it gives after the fall of Austin Adele, so you could find orcs sitting there, maybe, or highwaymen somewhere in the land. But it does give you a table of how many elves there might have been at the time, and a breakdown of their ethnicity. Then Lorien, you have different, the first reign of Galadriel, the reign of Am Amdur and Amroth, 
and then the informal reign of Galadriel and Celeborn. How many elves were there and all such. So that is really cool. It would have been cooler if they given the stats for Sauron's army in the Second Age when it came through. That would have been really cool to see. Then, of course, you go to your master NPC table, and there's a lot of them for both Austin, Adeling, and uh, Lorien. Master Herb table, Master Encounter charts, Master Beast table, ah, Master Beast chart. And then it goes into the conversion notes, which we won't get into. And that's about it. That's that book in a nutshell. Like, this isn't one of my favorite books, just because there's not really much you can do with it. I was happy that they went in the second age. I did like the military stats because you can use them in any other thing, like the War of the Ring as a military campaign. But yeah, it's not high on my list of campaign books. But anyway, anyone else who has this book or played with it, let me know what you guys did with it. And leave comments in the comment section, hit the like button, subscribe, whatever. And until next time, this has been Roman Day, so I'm out of here. Black riders play the countryside from ghost rides. They see the sign of your mind is turning bodies, burning riders through the night. Brainwashed robots dying fast, shadows frame will never last.